Episode 288, July the 6th, 2017. You're listening to a 4x4 four by four, four by four Radio Network Podcast. Podcasting since 2010. Are you ready? It's the G Talk Show. With Tammy on Wrangler. Tony and Josh on Cherokee. So sit back. Strap in. And brace yourself. Local Jeep news, national Jeep news, and news from around the world. It's This Week in Jeep. All right, Jeepers, have we not learned our lessons yet? Now, we hear stories all the time. We see the images on TV and hear the reports on radio. We even see some of the douchebaggery and poor judgment every day on YouTube. Sometimes it hits close to home. Sometimes it's just another face in the crowd. But it's always, always an avoidable tragedy. What am I talking about? No, it's not the fallout from selling your Jeep. Actually, it's even sadder. I'm talking, of course, about drinking and wheeling. Now, I will never advocate being under the influence while operating a vehicle, even a Jeep. This holds true no matter what you drive, no matter where you are driving it. And I personally believe this goes doubly so when you're off-road. Case in point, last Sunday on the world-famous Rubicon Trail, a 1986 Jeep was being operated by a 27-year-old Citrus Heights man when he poorly navigated a particularly treacherous section of the trail. When his inebriation caused him to misjudge one thing or another, and he rolled his Jeep. Now, ordinarily, this story would be saddened by the tales of body damage and various other carnage that happens from something like this. But in this case, we take an ordinary flop, and when combined with alcohol and taking place in the ever-dangerous Rubicon Wilderness area, well, it becomes something different entirely, especially when there's a loss of life. The driver, Kurt William Stever, thankfully was wearing his seatbelt, and he survived the horrific rollover with minor scratches and bruises. His passenger, however, 49-year-old John Gary Cowley from Auburn, California, was not so lucky. John was not wearing his seatbelt, and when the drunk Kurt rolled the Jeep, John was ejected. Unfortunately, he was not thrown clear of the Jeep as it rolled over and over and over, and at one point, the entire weight of the Jeep as it rolled came down on top of John. Now, if you know anything about the Rubicon, you'll know that there is not a lot of soft earth around there. In fact, there's a lot of rocks. A lot of rocks. And many of them are pretty nasty. Now, as the Jeep came down on John during one of these rollovers, well, he was crushed under the weight of the Jeep and suffered grievous injuries, which led to his death. Pronounced dead at the scene, John lost his life due to the ignorance and stupidity of a dumb 27-year-old who thought it would be a good idea to get drunk and try to navigate the likes of the Rubicon at 2 o'clock in the morning. Now, I don't care who you are, what you drive, or how often you're behind the wheel. There's no excuse for driving drunk, or even wheeling drunk for that matter. For those of you who don't know, the Rubicon Trail is also considered by the California Highway Patrol to be a legal road, even though it is not maintained like a normal highway. Because of this, DUI laws and restrictions still apply the same way, just as people driving on a freeway. It's important to keep in mind the operation of any vehicle while under the influence of alcohol is dangerous no matter where you are. And in this case, it was fatal. From all of us here at the Jeep Talk Show, our deepest condolences goes out to John Colley's family. Well, speaking of alcohol and Jeeps, the San Luis uh, Obispo County wineries have hit, uh, hit on a fun way to get customers up close and personal with the vines that grow their wines. Off-road Jeep tours. Now, following the previous story, I'd be amiss if I didn't preface this story by announcing or assuring to you guys that the vineyards use designated drivers and don't allow wine-filled Jeepers to wheel the acreage on their own. Dan Smith, the winemaker at Villa San Julieta in San Miguel, California, says, we're showing someone how we grow rather than just talking about the wine itself. They began offering vineyard Jeep tours clear back in March. Steinbeck Vineyards and Winery has offered vintage Jeep tours of its ex ex extensive Paso Robles property since 2003, long before the Steinbeck family began producing its own wine. The wine brand was actually born from the tours, said Cindy Steinbeck, part of the fifth generation of Steinbecks to ranch and farm in Paso Robles. Imagine that, an entire line of wines that stemmed from people wanting to vin the tour vineyards in a Jeep. Steinbeck, who leads the tours along with her father Howie and brother Alan, said that they've seen a growing interest over the past decade from customers wanting to get out in the fields. And what better way to do that, Jeepers, than from a Jeep? Well, hey, big thanks to all of you out there who continue to help us out by submitting stories for This Week in Jeep. If you have a response to any one of our stories, well, by all means, send us an email to info at jeeptalkshow.com. Oh my gosh, I just found something to add to my to-do list. Wine and Jeeps. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, when I was uh, when I found that story, I uh, was doing some research on it and stuff. I was I was thinking about you the entire time. I was like, oh, this has got Tammy written all over it. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to, Tony. If I get distracted, that's because I'm googling this this vineyard. So it's it's yeah, you, now, now you have 51 <laughs> before 50. <Tammy. sighs> yeah, really. <laughs> I need to be able to control internet at all these various Jeep talk right. show locations around the country. Right. Um, wow. I sure am sorry to hear about that loss of life. I mean, how horrific that must be to be, be out horrible. there with your friend and um, just because of your, your poor decision-making uh, capabilities, you watch somebody die like that. I mean, it's, I don't want to beat the guy up. I mean, I'm sure he feels horrible uh, in, in the situation, but you, you guys think about it. I mean, um, Whenever you're having the, the great deal of fun, even if nothing tragic happens, people that are drunk out on the trail or drinking heavily, maybe not drunk, it's not really a lot of fun for anybody around you. It just really isn't because you never know what to yeah. expect from somebody that uh, is, uh, you know, uh, shutting down brain cells. So, um, no, seriously, I, I know accidents and, and injuries and, and probably even death happens on the Rubicon Trail every year. Uh, obviously, this is one incident that was definitely avoidable. Right. Accidents are going to happen. Poor judgment is going to happen. You'll have a wheel slip. Uh, something will malfunction and you're going to be in a situation that may or may not become life threatening. Now, it all comes down to, you know, safety, proper, you know, routines when you're in these kind of situations and above all else maintaining your sobriety now look i love a beer as much as the next guy and believe me i have definitely tipped a few around the campfire but the last thing i'm going to do after polishing off a six-pack or something is hop in the jeep and start navigating trails one it's just a bad idea two you know come on you're going to event inevitably screw up your jeep or worse three you're going to kill somebody like this guy did uh, jeep was just horrific looking you know i did not not did not know that that was a public road that is pretty wild. I mean, that would be that great uh, government uh, waste of government money on roads uh, meme when they showed the Rubicon Trail. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I mean, just uh, to keep this into consideration, people, that, you know, the Rubicon is, is just one trail in the entire nation. Now, there are many off-road parks and obviously many other world-class wheeling destinations around our nation. Chances are the one in your state very well could be considered also state property or you know a state road or at least by in the eyes of the state patrol or the local police or sheriff's department uh a road that is applicable to the dui laws of you know that county or whatever so uh, again it's just never a good idea to drink and wheel or drive anything for that matter man i bet you if you're a cop out there uh you're really you have to take a lottery of uh, getting the the speed trap duty for the rubicon trail and i bet you they have a hell of a nice jeep to go out there or maybe it's a Toyota. I mean, they're the cops. Well, so, give yeah. you guys some perspective on this one. <laughs> this was so far out away from civilization that the sheriff's department had to uh, coordinate their search and the rescue, and their, I should say the recovery, mm -hmm. um, by, by longitudinal coordinates, by GPS coordinates. Um, th th things were so remote and so hard to get to where this accident happened uh, th that everything involving the recovery and and – uh, the investigation and everything was initially handled by Chopper uh, from the air because yeah. it was just so remote. Yeah, I was going to So, I mean, you that. can imagine the, the family. I mean, this, this guy, he very well may could have, you know, if he was just, you know, I don't know, on the, on the freeway or something uh, and had suffered some, you know, a rollover where he was ejected from the Jeep and it had landed on him or something like that. Maybe if he was, you know, on I-5 at the time, uh, a life flight helicopter could have gotten there in time, an ambulance, whatever, rushed him to the hospital. He might have been able to make it. But because he was in such a remote area uh, and because the injuries were so severe, they couldn't get anybody out there in any kind of relatively, you know, quick period of time. Uh, so likely, unfortunately, he probably bled out, which is uh, horrific to say. Um, but, you know, just it's one of these things where it, it's you know, part of the nature of the beast. When you're out in the wilderness enjoying something like a wheeling destination like the Rubicon, you got to take into consideration that if you get injured, you are miles, if not sometimes hours away from a medical facility or any kind of medical help. So another just one more reason to, you know, play it safe when you're out there, guys. Hey, folks, um, you can get on Twitter and you can tweet live to our show. All you need to do is um, send us a tweet and just add the hashtag JTS Live 
during the live show. And then you can watch for your tweet down at the bottom of the screen on the YouTube video. Remember, that's hashtag JTS live. When you when you were saying you can get on Twitter, I was like, uh oh, there's Tammy's going to be doing starting a fight here. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you get on Twitter and uh, well, anyway, uh, is the Jeep talk show just not enough for you? Need more? Well, we have more for you. Yeah, we do. The Jeep Talk Call In Show. Just go to youtube.com slash Jeep Talk Show on Tuesday at 8 p.m. Central Time. Tammy and I will have a, a guest interview, and uh, then we'll turn it over to you, the listeners. All you need is a phone and a voice. The Jeep Talk call Show every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Central Time on youtube.com slash Jeep Talk Show. And hey, Jeepers, be sure to catch the last episode, episode number 45, where Tony and Tammy talk with Charlene Bauer from the Ladies Off-Road Network. It's the Jeep Talk Show call Show with Tammy and Tony. So my very first job ever was actually changing tires in a dirt bike shop. I was the first girl that they had ever hired in this motorcycle huh. shop. If you're going to hire her, she has to go through the exact same route that all the guys have to go through. Hi, Deanna. Hi. I was actually calling in to just say hi and to say how awesome Charlene is. I just want to say she's a true encourager. And Ladies Off-Road Network is more than just what you see online. I teach, teach, teach. You're going to learn a ton of things. You're going to bond with some other women that have the exact same feelings that you have. And you're going to leave there and be able to take all of that information and all that knowledge back to your trails and back to your Jeep and back to your trail runs and be 100% more successful than you were when you left. That's episode 45, so just go back uh, one episode uh, from uh, uh, this episode, and you can find it right there on, uh, well, the the uh, Jeep Talk Show app on Google or uh, Apple Store. So coming up on our next Jeep Talk call-in show. Oh, yeah, we got Gina with nomnews.com. You know her, you love her from our trail food segments, but she does so much more than our puny little show, guys. Oh, no, she's a big deal. Find out more about Gina this coming Tuesday, 8 p.m. Central Time. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll just throw this out there. GMA, as in Good Morning America. Okay, we'll find out more, and that's going to be on episode 46 coming up this coming Tuesday. All right, uh, another big deal. Uh, oh, damn it, I'm sorry. I, I was misreading the notes. This is uh, from Nate, uh, Wrangler Extreme, uh, <laughs> and it's going to be the third in the segment of the YJ Sway Bar. Who knew that the YJ Sway Bars were so complex? Hey guys, it's Nate from SWBCrawler.com with another edition of Wrangler Extreme. Tonight, I'm going to uh, expand a little more on the Sway Bar series. Uh, this time, I'm going to give you a rundown of the tests that we performed and what the, uh, the results of those tests were. And then we're going to have another follow-up episode where we take those results and try to figure out what the heck they mean. Okay, so here's what I did. I took my LJ out to a buddy's place uh, out in Western PA. He used to run a club. So because the club dissolved, he ended up with an RTI ramp. So, of course, if you're going to test flex, what better way to do it than to build yourself an expensive trailer like Metal Cloak did or, you know, use an RTI ramp, which are pretty cheap and easy to come by. So what we did was we took my LJ, which has a anti-rock in the front and a stock flexible sway bar in the rear, and we ran it up the ramp in four different configurations. One with both the front and rear sway bars connected, one with the front disconnected and the rear connected, one with both disconnected, and one with just the anti-rock connected. Okay, oh, and we also put an angle finder on the front bumper to try to get an idea of body roll. Okay, so here we go. The LJ has a wheelbase of 102.75. Now, I know that may not be the same number you read on the internet, but that's what we measured. So, as accurate as we can be here. we With both connected, we got 77 inches up the ramp. That gives us a ramp score of roughly 750 and 15 degrees of body roll. Okay, so this is our baseline. Then, with the anti-rock disconnected and the rear sway bar still connected, uh, again, of course, same wheelbase, we made it 78.5 inches up the ramp. Now, that's only an inch and a half further than with both connected. So uh, that means the anti-rock isn't really limiting flex as much as uh, you might think. That gives us a ramp score of roughly 764 and 13 degrees of body roll. That's right. It's less body roll on the ramp than with the anti-rock connected, which seemed odd, but I'll explain that in a bit. 
with both the front and rear disconnected, we made it a, a, f- a whole 94 inches up the ramp for a ramp score of 915 and with 17 degrees of body roll. So it turns out that that rear sway bar is actually limiting more flex than the anti-rock is. That's pretty cool. And then, of course, with uh, the anti-rock connected and the rear sway bar disconnected, we made it 86 inches up the ramp for a ramp score of 836. Well, 837 if you round up. Uh, And again, 17 degrees of body roll. Now, I'll go into a little bit as to why I think that is in our next episode. So those are the ra- those are the the basic scores. Uh, we also ran Brian. He he's got a, a built up XJ. Uh, we ran that up the ramp. He's got coils front and rear, an anti rock in the front, and no sway bar in the rear. Uh, he made it 97 inches up the ramp with the anti rock connected for a ramp score of uh, 955 with 20 degrees of body roll. And then with the anti-rock connected or disconnected, he made it 100, well, he made it uh, 113 inches up the ramp for a ramp score of 1,113, which was uh, pretty darn cool. I mean, you should have seen it. Uh, so if you want more details about the test and the results, uh, if you go to swbcrawler.com forward slash anti-rock, I've written the whole thing up. There's pictures, there's uh, all kinds of information about the tests we performed. All right, next time around, we're going to try to make some sense out of all these numbers so stay tuned and thanks for listening so do you get bonus points if you flop over on the side you know you take it all the way up the ramp and it just falls over i, well, I just, what are I, the i got i got one thing to say to nate <laughs> nate i was told there would be no math <laughs> but you knew this everybody knows this no what math. um you know the the ramp number or what does that mean rti score Rate travel index. It's just a number that you can associate with your the articulation of, of your vehicle. Uh, it it do, doesn't correspond to this is the amount of inches that my you know it, the the thing you know it's it's basically just a number and it's for bragging how, rights more than anything else. Right? Uh, how do you get but, the number though? How do they figure it out? Uh, there is a specific formula, and Nate just you know very briefly touched on it. I used to know it off the top of my head, but I I, I don't anymore. But it's based on the the wheelbase, the 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 length of your of your Jeep basically oh. from the center of one wheel to the center of the other, and then that is divided by I think the number of inches that you go up the ramp, and then that is multiplied by a standard number. I think I, I can't remember exactly, so don't quote 30, me on all this. Thirty seven and a half line, headways. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. B- the bottom line is is basically it's just it's just a number for bragging rights that that right. you can associate with the articulation of your vehicle. So basically, they take into into account the the wheelbase and some of the other things that might give you a better score than somebody with a different size wheelbase. So they they adjust it uh, to 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 fit your vehicle so that all the numbers will be the same. The ending number. Well, yeah, because I mean, you know, like a, be a, a a stock, you know, TJ. Uh, you know, going up on a, on a on a ramp is is obviously has a much shorter wheelbase and may not be able to go up the ramp as high as say a full size pickup, right. which probably has thirty or forty inches on a wheelbase of a of a you know little TJ or something like that. So, you know, the, just the wheelbase alone, that thing can push a front tire up up. You know, and it's it's ba- and once you start lifting up that opposite rear tire, once that starts coming up the, off the ground. You got to get that back down on the pavement, and that's where your number is measured from. Yeah, that was going to be my next question. I'll, I'll, you have to have uh, the two rear tires on the pavement, uh, and then when it, when they go up, that means that uh, when one's not touching, then you've gone too far. Right now, yes. uh, there's a comp- there's a company out there called Metal Cloak, and you guys may are, may be familiar with those, maybe not, but they have taken the whole um, RTI concept and gone in a step further and developed this trailer which uses airbags on opposite corners. Uh, instead of you driving your Jeep onto a ramp, you drive your Jeep onto a trailer, and the trailer does all the work for you by, you know, raising and oh. lowering uh, to, you know, opposite corners of the vehicle at a time, and uh, and it's all computerized, and it it does all the measuring and everything wow. else for you. Does the math for you? It does do um, the math for you. Steve just said it's inches divided by the wheelbase times one hundred. There we go. See, I knew there was some math involved. Why a hundred and I, why not ten? So the the thirty seven and a half Henways must have been the Egyptian RTI ramp that I was <laughs> yeah, thinking uh-huh. about. Thirty seven and a half Henways. <laughs> That's right. I'm waiting for somebody to, to email email us. What's a Henway? 
And how do you convert <laughs> hen way to stone? <laughs> well, that's that's one way to catch a hen. All righty. Well, that's interesting. That was a, a good uh, a good chat about that. I, don't, I, I had always wondered about the RTI ramps and the scores and how they came up with it. So uh, I hadn't thought about it till uh, listening to this uh, this clip. I hadn't thought about it in a while anyway. You're listening to a 4x4 Radio Network podcast. I bet you know somebody who wheels. Maybe that person doesn't own a Jeep. That's all right. But I bet they consider you one heck of a friend if you turn them on to the 4x4 Radio Network. There's something for everybody there. No matter how you enjoy going off-road, just visit 4x4radionetwork.com and learn more about the 4x4 podcast, the Center Steer podcast, and the Trail Chasers podcast. It's the all it's it's all the off-road audio you can take in one easy to find spot. And the best part, it's all free. 4x4radionetwork.com. Free. I love free. Except when where there's taxes involved. Shut up and listen. Oh, I'm sorry. When you drive a cheap, everybody knows you rock. Off-road in a regular with all that guys are spell off camera. Remember what you see? A dude in the Cherokee. You could come off-roading if you get up off your knees. Get a regular, drive in a cheap regular. We're gonna kill it. We'll pull you out of a ditch, bitch. We should be headbanging when that's going on. I know. I want to, but <laughs> I'm, I'm holding back. Um, so every week I do Wrangler Talk, I have to come up with a title for Tony. Um, and this title is also on a bumper sticker on my Jeep, which I hope I'm not going to be kicked out of the mom's group <laughs> for it. But the title of my Wrangler Talk tonight is My Shafts a Woody. Yeah, it is. <laughs> finally, finally, finally. Um, don't you guys get tired of waiting for your Jeep parts and then you waiting no to idea. get them installed? <laughs> I do. And I, Josh I know is Josh waiting for does. money. He's waiting for money for Jeep parts. Yeah, he yeah. is two weights, Tammy. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> uh, but you know what? Josh has a heck of a lot more patience than I do. I waited. A week for my Jeep parts, and then about another week for the install. Um, it was driving me crazy. Um, I'm going to have to learn some lessons in patience from Josh. So this past Monday, I was finally able to get my new Tom Woods custom front drive shaft installed on my Jeep. Now, my stock front drive shaft has a Rezepa joint, which had, has been flexed to its limits, Um which this Rezepa joint has a boot that protects its guts. And this boot, as it flexes, it just can't hold up to the stress of the added 3.5 lift on my Jeep. So when it's flexing, it wears and it starts to crack and split and it starts spewing grease on my undercarriage. Mm. And you can't refill this grease on these um, OEM drive shafts. So eventually it will break. Mine hasn't yet. And I'm doing a little preventive, mis- preventive maintenance on it by replacing it. Um, these stock drive shafts, because they are a little larger in diameter, can also rest on the exhaust and cause some more issues. Hmm. So the Tom Woods custom drive shafts have a smaller diameter, which allows the suspension to drop on the 2012 and newer 3.6 Wranglers without touching the exhaust because it's smaller. Um, typically you see this happening with lifts of three inches or more, um, or after driving 20 to 30 K miles, um, or after lots of use when you're, um, when the suspension is stretching. The Tom Woods front drive shaft also has a double card and joint, which allows for more movement of that joint. And this drive shaft has several points for regreasing. Now, this is very important um, to note that maintenance duty is very important to keep up with on this drive shaft um, by regreasing it. And if you do that, this drive shaft, I hear from many, many people who have commented on my social media that it will last forever. So they say it's a good idea to regrease it every time you change your oil, and you should also 
add more grease to it after you've been in deep water or when you're mudding off-road. So um, I haven't taken it off-road yet, um, but I'm driving around to and from work in the grocery store so far, and it everything seems awesome. Nothing seems different, um, worse or better. It's just everything's like normal. So, folks, anything you'd like to add, I'd love to hear from you. You can join our conversation by going over to the jeeptalkform.com, or you can call our voicemail line, or you can email me at info at jeeptalkshow.com. I look forward to hearing from you. So, Tammy, I couldn't tell from the, the pictures that you had put up uh, on uh, Facebook, uh, is this drive shaft also a Rezepa joint, or is it just uh, U-joints? Just the to you joins um next thursday yeah next thursday um on my blog post i'm gonna show the different pictures of um i'll show the rosepa joint and the joints of the the tom woods and you can see the difference i kind of got the feeling that they went with u joints because they have a higher angle of articulation where the rosepa joint looked like it would uh, only go so far and then start uh, yeah. start binding um right Josh, well, I mean, and Tammy, the, you may know this too, but Josh, is this kind of like a CV joint uh, for an axle? Uh, in a way, look, a, a Rosepa joint has a, a basically a, a, you have these these grooves, and and the grooves are are, are sort of mate with a ball, and 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 this is how they kind of keep things into that joint, and the whole joint's encased in this you know this sleeve more or less, and and that's what Tammy was talking about, you know, it, it getting stretched and starting to tear. Look, any joint is going to have a maximum amount of, of angle in which it can still operate at as it, as it turns. Mm -hmm. Where Zeppa joint is no different. You know, it's, it has a certain amount of angle that it can take and obviously a certain amount of stretch on the drive line before the boot starts tearing or before you start binding. Uh, same thing applies to a double carden joint, although the double carden joint doesn't have grease internal into it. Um, now, some of them are, you know, greasable, some of them are sealed, et cetera, et cetera. But nonetheless, the same thing applies. You know, there, you can only go so far of an angle before you start to bind. A double carden joint does give you a little bit better angles, you know, a little bit more angles than, than the Rosepa joint will give you. And uh, at least in my opinion, it is a stronger joint. So, uh, you know, I think uh, Tammy went the right direction on this one. So uh, would you say the Rosepa joint is really mainly for a smooth ride? Yes, definitely. Now, it, it, because you have, you know, look, a, a, a double carden joint, a U joints, essentially, you've got, you know, it's a, like a plus, you know, you've got, you know, four points of contact, right? Uh, a Rosepa joint has many more points of contact uh, that load is distributed across a lot, much larger surface area. Um, but in my, in my opinion, it's also a weaker joint. Sure. It might be a little bit smoother operation. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, when you start getting into extreme crawling and much larger tire sizes and, and, and stuff like that, that's definitely going to become a weak point in your system. So I'm a little surprised that they put the Rosepa joint on a Rubicon. You would think that Jeep would, uh, build it so that it could be wheeled. And, and I understand well, if, it, if you don't it lift it, it's not really that right. much of an issue. Go ahead. Right. Tell me. Oh, I was going to say, if you don't lift it, it's going to be fine. And one of the, by the way, the first picture I picked up, put up on the screen for my phone was the Rosepa joint. Mm -hmm. And this is the joint of the new drive shaft that's up right now. Right. I'm so, so um, but you, but you but, have to agree that, you know, Jeep has been around long enough to understand that a lot a, I mean, of people are going to be lifting their Jeep. Right. Uh, from what I've heard from several people, even, um, Steve 4.3 LXJ said it was a it was a cost cutting measure. Oh, now Jeep's it makes part. sense. Yeah, I believe it. Which is weird so. because there's technically more moving parts in a Rosepa joint than there is, you know, in a you know, a U joint. I mean, U joints, joint. U joints are cheap and they've been around forever. It's hard to believe that that would be. Well, Rosepa, according to Wikipedia, has been around since 1926. So, but I think the Jeeps prior to 2013 had. Um, the double carded joints. U joints, I'm, right? Yeah, if I'm correct, or if I remember correctly. So, does anybody know if, uh, and Tammy, maybe you know uh, that if you have uh, uh, U joints in your uh, your axles, or is it some sort of uh, uh, CV uh, uh, joint? Am I saying that right, Josh? Was it it's CV joints, right? The the ball type things for the axles, right? You, you can say you know CV or constant velocity or you know double carden. You're kind of all in the neighborhood there. But the CV is uh, is different. I'm talking about the round, the kind of round ball looking thing that goes on the axle. 
Are oh, you talking about an axle U joint? Well, or drive length. The the axle. The, could the axle the axle U joint? Like it's basically just a U joint. Well, the, but on the drive some, lines, it's a double carton. Yeah, they're, they're, but there's some that have the the ball looking thing, and I'm I'm calling it CV, but I think it's called something oh, else. Oh, I you're um, thinking of the uh, girl? I'm brain farting on the name. It's uh, RCV. Uh, there we go. Thank okay, you. RCV axles. Uh, RCV. Yeah. So. Uh, I w- I'm wondering if they have RCV or standard U joints on the on the the axles. I'm on the front axle. Oh, standard U joints. RCV is is very much uh, aftermarket. Oh, I didn't realize that. Okay, interesting. Do you think the RCVs are stronger or weaker than the oh, U joints? Oh yes, much stronger. So it's a good upgrade. Mm-hmm. Interesting. All right. Well, uh, getting too much into what Tony wants to know tonight, and uh, <laughs> sorry about that, Tammy. <laughs> no, I was I was done. <laughs> All right, well, let's get over to our re- reviews. I love reviews because that means we're hearing from you guys. Uh, so uh, it's really easy to give us a review on Facebook, Twitter, iTunes, and even YouTube. Did we miss your review? It's really important to us. We want to know about it. So if we did, email us at info at jeeptalkshow.com. Yeah, we got an email here uh, in response of our last episode. You guys may have uh, heard us talking about uh, well, one of our youngest fans, if you will, and he's been emailing into the show, and uh, and it's been an interesting process getting those emails and trying to figure out what they mean. Uh, but <laughs> we uh, we actually got in contact. Well, I, the the father of this young man got in contact with us and uh, kind of gave us a little bit of backstory. Anyways, you might you might have heard us last episode. Wish him a happy birthday. Uh, he was turning, uh, turning what is it, eight years old, seven or eight years yes, old around the seven, around the holiday uh, there. Be eight, yep. uh, definitely one of our youngest uh, listeners. Ever. I think we have a ten year old out in the UK as well. Um, but uh, but this guy definitely beats him by a few years. But anyways, Dad wrote in and says, "Hey Tony, Tammy, and Josh. Well, I don't know how to thank you enough for making my little boy's day. He listened to episode two eighty seven on Sunday evening with me. When asked what he wants to get for his birthday, his reply over and over was Jeep parts, tools, and to go jeeping." Can you blame the kid? He got all of his wishes. Hearing his name and a birthday wish on your show was just icing on the cake. He laughed so hard and listening to you read me and listening to you read my email. Again, I can't make you understand what that did for him. I sincerely hope you all had a great holiday. Thanks again. We'll talk soon. Ron. That's great. Well, Ron, thank you very much. And and uh, we're, of, we're of course talking about his his uh his little son who uh has been uh hopefully we'll get him to call into the show or something like that and uh we'll be able Leave to put a voice now. to the Voice to the name, anyways. Yep, yep. I saw some of the pictures that his dad shared, and I swear to God, some of those pictures were on the exact same trail that I just rode in Moab. Oh, ain't that something? <laughs> yeah, they were like, out there I taunting recognize- you. They were taunting you, Tammy. We're yeah, here, you're not. <laughs> there was one picture where I remember um, being a pirate, where I was using my my bad language. Oh, oh yeah. I, I thought this was a. Uh, you know, much younger days or something, oh, 20s no, no. or something. Yeah. Um, you so navi- you navigated a trail with an eye patch. What? <laughs> yes, I know. And my sword. <laughs> Damn parrot. Oh, I wanted to mention something real quick. Uh, we were talking yeah. about Tom Woods drive shaft and I forgot to mention, got caught up in all my questions. Uh, I had a, a recent uh, back and forth email conversation with uh, uh, the man, the, the Tom Wood, or at least they claimed to be on the email. Uh, and uh, I was trying to get Tom to be a guest on the Jeep Talk Colin show. Man, what a funny guy. I mean, he made movie references and so on and so forth. And he says, uh, if you've ever heard me talk, you would understand why I don't uh, do things like that. So I'd like (laughs) to call on the Jeep Talk show audience. I think we'd all like to hear from Tom Wood, the the drive shaft guy, and so much more, but also, you know, when he's mainly known for drive shafts, Reach out to Tom through uh, emails and or call him up uh, three o'clock in the morning. I think would be a great time and say, <laughs> Tom, come on the Jeep talk Colin show. We want to know more about you. Now he said he might get one of his, uh, one of his workers there, one of the younger people uh, to come onto the show. And uh, I said, uh, I said, yeah, that's, that's great. But man, we'd love to have you. So reach out and tell Tom that you want to hear him on the Jeep talk Colin show. Alrighty, so uh oh hey yeah guys if you're looking for tech talk well uh we don't have one this week but hey i want you guys to know that you can always send an email in 
and ask me your tech questions. That's right. Send an email to info at jeeptalkshow.com. Use the subject line Tech Talk, and I'll be sure to get those. And uh, and I've got a couple banked up here. We'll get to some here in the next episode. But in the meantime, guys, be sure if you have a tech question, let us know about it, and we'll answer it here on the air. Gee, I didn't check the notes. I didn't know you were slacking tonight. This is Zach from CNM Jeeps. This is Lisa Simon from Chim Perfect. This is Alan Peterson with Painless Performance Wiring. This is Amy from TNA Decal. This is Neil from SFJ4x4.com. This is Randall Spear, Motorsports Manager from Dana Aftermarket. This is Paul Wolf from ENI USA r and hey, I'm John Eastmore from Black Forest. This is Nathan Leahy from Mickey Thompson Tires and Wheels. And, and you're listening, listening to the Jeep, Jeep Talk Show. And a nice big Jeep wave goes out to all of our friends and fans in the off-road industry. We thank you for your support. Hey, this is Tony. And I'm Tammy. And this is Josh. And you've reached our 24-7 voicemail line. You guys know what to do, so after beep, leave your message. Hey, folks, you know, we love hearing from you, and we want you to call our voicemail line, 530-675-4102, or you can jump over to our website, jeeptalkshow.com, and leave us a message. And you just click on that Leave Voicemail button, and we love hearing from you, your Jeep stories, um, you can tell me how great I am and how Tony, <laughs> you know, is getting a little annoying with his red jeeps are sexy. So um, anyway, folks, please Ooh, leave us a voicemail. Red jeeps are sexy. <laughs> See, there you go. <laughs> so you're gonna hate that you said uh, how great you are. Hey guys, it's Nate. Um, I was just listening to Tammy's Wrangler or Wrangler's uh, segment uh, about the uh, four wheel drive. You know, four high to four low shifting with the the grinding she was experiencing and all the all the effort she's put into figuring out the uh, the proper you know series of events you need to go through to get your your transfer case into four low without that grind and uh, to be honest I, I just wanted to fall in and say thanks <laughs> I've uh, I've been driving Wranglers all these years and I, I got to say that I did eventually develop a knack for getting the uh, transfer case into four low. Um, I'm one of those guys that's constantly shifting in and out of four low while I'm on the trail. Uh, you know, I take it out of four low or out of four wheel drive completely when I feel like I don't need it. Um, and I guess through all the years I've, I've figured out, you know, just through intuition, I suppose, the, the right series. And as Tammy's been talking about it, I realized that the thing I've been doing to get it in and out of four low is exactly what she's describing. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, good job, Tammy. Glad to, uh, <laughs> Glad to hear that it's worked out, and uh, glad to hear that you've you figured it out and you're sharing it with others. So, uh, awesome job. All right, thanks. Bye. So, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Tammy does not like suck-ups. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not true. I Actually, I want to thank um, my trail guide in Moab, KL. He's the one who showed me that when I was in the, the big green Jeep um, out there. Excellent. It's always it's always nice to have confirmation of uh, of what you've uh, what you think is right. right I, I've been right. through several things like that myself. So eh, it works, but uh, am I really doing it right? It, that's kind of the fun thing about uh, doing the jeeping jeeping thing. You're you're not always a hundred percent, especially if you're brand new to it. You didn't have any family members or any friends that were into it uh, prior. From the mind of Nikki G. Hey, this is something we all look forward to each and every week, and that's hearing from the mind of Nikki G. Hey, this is Nikki G, and uh, I just want to say, uh, Tammy, I really liked your uh, ammo can storage <laughs> system that you have. Uh, I went on the website, tried to see if they made some for the cheap Cherokee, and I no luck finding it. So uh, I might try to fabricate my own if uh, Wendy ever lets me get my power tools back. Thanks. But uh, I was pretty impressed to see purple ammo cans. I didn't know they came in different colors. So I went down to the uh, Army Surplus store to get some. I was hoping maybe they come in red. Ooh. But uh, all they had was <laughs> olive drab green. So uh, I wonder, did you get those from the French military store? <laughs> But I don't. And uh, Josh, I'm sorry to hear that your car got stolen again. Uh, maybe it's time to rethink your vanity license plate that says free to a good home. Oh. 
And I can't believe I did this whole thing in just one take. Awesome. I'm getting better at this. <laughs> All right, boys and girls, Ready I'll go, chat Dickie later, and you have a good one. Bye. <laughs> Only, uh, gosh, he's probably done a hundred of those and, uh, I know how he feels cause, uh, uh, well, you guys know how many times I mess up when we're just trying to do the, uh, the promo. So it's, it's a wonderful feeling whenever you get through it once. And the, the really nice feeling is whenever you're doing the promo with two other people and you're the one that always messes up and the night that you do it great, they are so shocked they screw up. So <laughs> that's, that's wonderful. Anyway, uh, so I want to do a quick uh, shout out to a, a really funny podcast that I personally have listened to. And uh, well, let me just roll it. Kira Soltanovich show. Yay, I'm your host, Kira Soltanovich. Shout outs to some podcast supporters. Oh, I'm so excited. Thank you, Jeep Talk Show. Listen to their podcast. It's about Jeeps. Yeah, it is. And uh, you need to go over there and check out uh, Kira. And I'm not going to try saying her last name. Soltanovich. Hey, I can say it. It's you a, did it. First try. <laughs> it's wow. A, it's a very Woo. funny podcast. Well, she is a professional comedian. So, you know, what would you expect? Go over to www kiracomedy.com she i think it used to be kirasaldanovich.com but you know they had some issues so they just made it kira comedy but anyway just go to kiracomedy.com slash podcast and have a listen i think you will enjoy it and again thanks for the shout out kira now should we move on to this next one no let's let's have... just sit here and wait a little bit just, just marinate in it a little bit <laughs> just... no, i didn't know if you guys wanted to skip over it or not Oh, we got um, time. It's uh, I think okay. we're doing okay on time yeah. tonight. Yeah, um, folks. Normally during this time, we either do Amazon. You about what or my um, Jeep product review? But tonight, it's all about cool Jeep stuff for your Jeep. And it looks like I'm the only one who found something. Um, this is really cool. I don't know if you guys are gonna want to wear this, but it's really cool for women. I have a purple one, and I'm like really upset that I didn't have it with me because I could wear it on my head it's um like a, a headband to keep your hair down ah. when you're driving and you can get it over at amazon just um we'll have a link later in the show notes but you just type in jeep hair don't care and there's a little picture of a jeep flexin and it says jeep hair don't care and it's only That's actually kind of cute. now i'm kind of confused if it's a headband to hold your hair in place it really doesn't go with the Jeep hair, I don't care type thing. It, it, forgive me for being logical here. No, I just No, no, some women don't want to put stuff on their hair because, you know, they'll get hat head or hair head. Oh, God, you know? yes. So, Bed head some, is horrible. Yeah. So, anyway, it's really cool. It comes in many colors. Just don't buy the red one. Um, you won't look good in it. Uh -uh, um, no, if you're not cool, uh <laughs> if you're not cool, if you don't want to be sexy, don't get the red one. Yeah. So anyway, you can get it on Amazon and don't forget to go to amazon.com slash Jeep talk show when you buy it and Ooh. we'll get a percentage of that. What did we do with Amazon to let the, to get into on board where they would do that for us, Tammy? <laughs> it's backwards. It's Jeep talk oh, show.com slash Amazon. Yes. I so, always get it. I'm list deck sick with that. <laughs> yes. So sorry. The, now, just in case you didn't catch it, it's jeeptalkshow.com slash Amazon. That would be cool. I would love to be able to do amazon.com slash jeeptalkshow. We need to contact those people and tell them we're a big deal. We need some extra effort over there. Are, you know. it's, it's about time. <laughs> hey, guys, real quick. I want you guys to listen to Tony play this intro. <laughs> hey, I think a survey in the woods is a thing that you want. Is it like a snipe hunt? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the Survey in the woods. Man. Go over there at 600 <laughs> yards. Oh, and, wait, wait. Hold on. I need to go to urbandictionary.com. Yeah. Survey in the woods. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, no. No, 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 Why don't you no, go no. 600 <laughs> yards, hold this bag, and then we're going to send a survey over there to you. <laughs> so if you don't know about our survey, please take a moment and take our survey at jeeptalkshow.com slash survey. Probably the shortest survey plug that we've done. Yeah, seriously. Well, you guys might have uh, heard Mickey G there, and uh, of course, in our last episode, some details about my car leaving my uh, ownership again, unplanned. <laughs> yeah, my so car sad. got stolen again. Uh, this was uh, last Wednesday night. At some point in time, I, I woke up Thursday morning, uh, day that we're going to do the show, and uh, go out to go to work, and the driveway's empty. Yeah, good times. 
So oh. um, I made the call and um, I actually got the car got the car recovered. Uh, I got the call back uh, from the uh, the police department uh, Sunday morning, bright and early. It was about six o'clock, six thirty oh, in the morning. Uh, they called me and uh, said, "Hey, we uh, we've got your car." And I was like, "Great! Um, is it all in one piece?" And they said, "Well, the officer is sitting in front of it, and he seems to think so." I was like, "All right, well, I'll be out there in about ten or fifteen minutes." So, uh, gathered some stuff and and got out to the uh, the scene of the crime, as it were. Um, officer was standing there with his uh, lights on and everything else like that, and then talked to him for a minute and. And I guess where they had dumped it uh, was a common dump spot for stolen vehicles. He said this is the second one that he has recovered uh, in the month of June alone. So, um, yeah, that's uh, just they, one of those things. I were guess. they both Hondas? I didn't ask details about the other ones or anything like that. So, um, initially, I, I, I did a visual inspection, um, opened things up, uh, discovered that they uh, had basically parted my car out. Um, uh, opened up the trunk and and it's uh, and what is with people who steal cars and their insistence on leaving everything that they own or can pick up or find in the vehicle? I th- th- I probably have two full black garbage bags full of just crap. They uh, they can't afford trash service, Josh. Josh. Uh, apparently, <laughs> apparently. So um. Whatever they did to bypass my alarm or, or whatever, the, the taillights don't work, uh, the brake lights don't work, um, the, uh, they, they grabbed the, um, the bezel in the, in the dash and just reefed on it, uh, breaking the center console in half to get to, my, uh, to, get to the stereo in the dash, uh, which is ISO mounted. The only way they could get to it was either to delicately you know, do some disassembly and remove the appropriate pieces and pull the stereo out or do the snatch and grab like what they did and just break a bunch of shit. Um, they, uh, cut and broke the seat brackets to get to the amplifier that was underneath the seat. And they, of course, stole the subs that were in the trunk. So, uh, the alarm doesn't work. The keyless entry does. The tail lights don't work. The turn signals don't work. Um, they stole my wheels and tires, uh, left me with black steelies with bald tires. So bald that, uh, belts are showing on one and there's a giant bubble on the sidewall of another. Uh, the car is essentially undrivable. It, it does roll. It, it does drive. It runs and drives, but uh, it's not street legal at this point in time. So uh, there is obviously some electrical issues with it. Um, one of the things that I was familiar with back when I worked in the industry was a way to bypass a car's alarm system, but also risking frying everything else inside of it is to use a taser at a uh, point close to a tail light, and, um, and that will fry the microelectronics in the alarm system by the electrons flowing through the path of least resistance, um, backfeeding voltage through the light flash circuit and into the alarm, and yada, yada, you get the magic smoke. Um, I think that's what they did with my car. I don't know for sure, and neither did the police, um, but I have the car back. It's in my driveway, and I'll be doing some troubleshooting on it to figure out the electrical before I find some wheels and tires to put on it, before I sell the damn thing. Because I am there so you sick go. of Three strikes and you're car. out, right? That's right. Three strikes, you're out. All I can say is I'm glad you didn't paint it red. <laughs> You'd never so get it back. What you're saying is it, it, it was stolen <laughs> because it wasn't red. <laughs> you never, you would never seen it again. Uh, I was just so surprised that, uh, not that it was stolen. I mean, once the, it goes, to, goes, it goes missing twice. The third time's not that big a shock, but well, that's, that's that kind of what came, I was telling my coworkers is like, well, shit, at this point it's almost comedy. Yeah. But the thing that surprised me, and maybe this is common, but the thing that surprised me is they took your, your tires and wheels and didn't at least leave it on blocks. They actually supplied you with a set <laughs> of wheels and tires, albeit crap. But still, you know that's a that's a loss. That's a that's a that eats into the profits, Josh. Yeah. Well, the the second time it was stolen, I had just I mean, like not even two months prior, put brand spanking new wheels and tires on it, and uh, and when it was stolen that time, um, I got it back on jack stands. Right. Uh, it, I think it had it had one or two spare tires on it, and then it, the rest were on jack stands. Um, and so it was, uh, you know, I. Again, I've got a stack on the side of my house now of bare steel wheel, you know, uh, black steelies with a bunch of bald tires on them and stuff. I'm going to have to go down to one of these, you know, secondhand tire shops here and just be like, hey, you want a whole bunch of steel wheels? Here you go. Maybe it's just because I've seen Roadhouse a couple of times here recently, but it reminds me of him, uh, uh, of Patrick Swayze buying the, uh, the junker car and buying five extra tires and wheels and, and putting them in the trunk. 
<laughs> so that whenever his car got trashed in the parking lot, he would just, you know, laugh, take the yeah. screwdriver yeah. out of one of the tires and just replace everything and order a new windshield and get a new antenna for the, you know, et cetera. I'm almost seeing, seeing you in this situation. It's I, very similar. I don't Tony. think, I don't think, uh, <laughs> I don't think that I would give up on this this vehicle, Josh. I think I would look at it as a project to make it damned impossible for them to steal it ever again. Well, I was I was asking the the officer if if it was legal for me to apply lethal means to my vehicle security. Oh, you never tell them what's electric shock. <laughs> He's well, that's be, kind of the direction I'm going. Exactly. Here. You it, can you can put a, a flyback transformer in there and get fifty thousand volts to a hundred thousand volts easily, quick. Very easily. Trigger it with a relay and and the alarms armed output and yeah, good to go. Um, it's actually something that I've uh, that I've done in the past um, when I was an installer uh, in the mobile electronics field. I uh, would install what are called pain generators uh, inside yes. of vehicles. And these are these are these are piezo siren based electronics which emit a very horrendous tone yeah and if you are exposed to it with uh, in, a, in an enclosed space like a vehicle for any length of time you're going to start bleeding out of your ears now, i'm not joking here this is this is serious and and these things i think they have been outlawed in some states but in oregon they were they at least they were legal uh, back in the day uh but uh yeah, I've installed many of these this, these things in, into vehicles before, and I think I might even have a couple out in the garage. So I, I may have to uh, incorporate some pain generators into uh, into the Honda just for grins and giggles. Yeah, I and then leave the door open. Yeah, <laughs> arm the alarm, turn the dome light off, leave the door open. Okay, go for it. <laughs> Be like a bait car. Yeah, I, and that was one of the comments that I made on my Facebook post is that uh, you should sell it to the police because it's a a proven bait car yeah, <laughs> all they really need to do is i'm gonna it. talk to him about that <laughs> no actually uh one of the things that i that i talked to the officer about i was just like you know so the, the the first time it was stolen you guys you know i didn't get it back for like over a week because you guys had it and were fingerprinting it and processing it and all that so when can i expect that to happen and he's like it's not i was like oh Okay, so you guys just don't do this stuff, you know, don't don't you know follow up on crimes. And he's like, if we were, follow, were to follow up on every stolen car report that we get, we would be so imagine. backlogged that you know it would we'd never get anything done. He's like, we're already so backlogged on on you know labs for you know rape kits and and DNA and and stuff like that for serious crimes that we don't have time to process stolen vehicles unless they're involved in a serious crime. Now, the first time my car was stolen, it was involved in a serious crime. So, you know, that was the only reason why they went that far, you know, with that. But this time, it's just a stolen car. They jacked your stuff. Nah, let the insurance handle it. So insurance. they'll never process this kind of stuff. Um, I was talking to him about, you know, well, you know, what, what happens then? You know, what happens from here? You know, he's like, well, you know, if, if we catch somebody and, you know, they have to admit it, then that's one thing. Well, in digging through the car and, and going through all the crap that they left behind, I found a receipt. What they had done, it, it, it appears, as it, when they bypassed the alarm, they screwed things up and they tried to fix the turn signals. And they, they tried to, to, you know, obviously repair the damage that they had done. They wanted to keep driving my vehicle and not risk getting pulled over by not having taillights and turn signals. So they went to a local Fred Myers, a, a store, and purchased a bunch of automotive bulbs. I'm going to take that receipt that I found in the trunk <laughs> that has the date and time stamp on it and the store location. I'm going to go there and I'm going to talk with the store manager, tell him my situation, you know, show him the case number that I have for the stolen vehicle report and everything else like that and plead with him of whether or not I can get the footage of that register at that date and time. Yeah, the and cops, then I'm going to take that to the police and well, the be like, here, I did your work for you. Yeah, the cops should do that. That's easy. You should now. If the if the store doesn't um, doesn't authorize the release of this information, I have a, a detective who ha, who has been assigned to the case, if you will, even though he's not going to do anything about it. Um, I, I have a case number. I have a detective who I can call, and I will tell him, "Hey, I've got this information." Now the store is not willing to release it to me because I'm just a citizen. Uh, you, however, are a man of the law. They will be happily to release it to you. They are awaiting for your arrival. Now, whether or not the police actually will take up the cause and and you know follow my my lead on on the uh, on the detective part of this uh, side of things, I don't know. But it's worth a shot, and I'm going to do it. 
Yeah, I hope I hope you do, and uh, let us know what happens on that in future episodes of the Jeep Talk Show. Well, you guys will know this week, because I'm going to do it this weekend. Good. So, you don't want to wait too long, because the, the video doesn't, uh, maybe two weeks of... Uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of what I was thinking, too. So. so, Tammy, what you got going on? Well, I've been... I don't know if I mentioned to you guys before, I'm doing this thing called... Is my audio okay? Huh? Is my... Uh, oh, shut up. <laughs> it just sounded funny in my <laughs> headphones. I thought I was doing it again. <laughs> No, I'm doing this. Um, it's called Project 100. It's I'm getting all my personal items down to under 100 items, which uh, I do if you don't cut my clothes. But anyway, during this <laughs> whole, <shoes>. I'm, <laughs> I'm splurge or purging um, everything in the house, and so I went into our paperwork, you know, the taxes and all that, and I'm throwing a bunch of stuff away. And I went to my Think Jeep of holder. the Legos, people. The Legos. <laughs> So I went into my Jeep paperwork, you know, my payments and stuff, the little payment booklet, which I don't use because I just pay it um, online automatically. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know, through my bank, um, auto pay, bill pay. So I'm looking at this and I'm like, oh my God, I have been overpaying $50 a month. I'm paying the late amount price. And those bastards didn't tell you. So it's paid off and your time it's time to buy a new Jeep. I was gonna say, look I at know. it this way, you're just gonna pay your Jeep <laughs> off early. Right. So now the question is, do I just keep paying the fifty dollars more a month or do I save that fifty dollars and I can buy Jeep parts with it? I would I would, I, I would say, call the t- the title company or bank or something to be like, Hey, if I make a payment that's fifty dollars less this month, are you gonna, you know right. you're gonna find me? You're gonna you're gonna you know hold me at fault? Right. I think I'm uh Three payments ahead. G parts. If really, if you, yeah. So I, I tried calling them just to see what my payoff is now, um, just to see where I'm at. But they were closed because I didn't figure this out till like ten tonight. But oh, that's I'm what, such an idiot. That's a bad thing about cleaning. <laughs> you find out you're wasting hey, your I money. I guess b- better to be fifty bucks, you know, more oh, than yeah. fifty bucks shy every oh, month. Oh well, they would have told you. They would have been. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They would have been calling oh, yeah. you. <laughs> So I've been doing this since what uh, December of 2014. That's my was my first payment on my Rubicon. So two years of um, two and a half years of fifty dollars extra a month it doesn't cover one of your uh, locker buttons, Tammy. So yeah, I know. Think of it that way. Oh, and speaking of that, we, when I was at the um, getting my drive shaft put on. We, we he was pointing out some of the the parts on the Jeep, and one of them was where the electronic sway bar stuff is, and that makes me nervous when that thing's gonna go, because they are super expensive to fix. There you go. It's time to uh, get one of those uh, anti rocks that uh, yep that Nate was talking about. <clears throat> you you uh, take care of it before it breaks is what I always say. You know, reduce your payment by fifty dollars a month and buy you one. Right. So I'm considering that so let's jump on over to the promised video there with bart uh i'm not sure if it was the the pre-show that i mentioned this or not but this is one of the videos that uh uh, video interviews that bart did out at the bantam jeep festival all right it's bart again with the jeep talk show and we're here talking to jack smith and uh jack uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your uh your uh jeep here all right it's a 1979 jeep cj7 um it is the painted the factory color which is amc sunrise orange of course uh these days the paint uh probably a little better quality than what they had back then so it uh it definitely looks like sunshine uh when i decided to rebuild it it was a a 10-year project uh it wouldn't be that long if i was a little more motivated but <laughs> you know how projects go uh after it sat in the garage for a while to get it to get me a little more motivated I decided to go a little bit a little bit off uh, the stock we ended up narrowing uh, one ton axles and uh, putting them under it four length to suspension uh, coil overs on the front I ended up going with an LT1 power plant for fuel injection uh, nice. redid the transfer case and everything <laughs> when I go low range low gear through the rears it's 109 to 1 crawl ratio it, it was built to be a true rock crawler. Uh, a buddy of mine had a body shop, and he threw the paint on for me, and he did a little too nice of a job. So <laughs> instead of being in the playground, we're in the show. 
Oh, I can see that. Yeah, something this beautiful, it's kind of hard to get pretty muddied up. But yeah, um, and uh, yeah, did, so took you 10 years for yes, this. Sir. How long did you think it was going to take you when you first started? Well, it only took me a week to tear it apart, so I thought we were doing good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> the first year we did quite a bit of work to it, but then, you know, life happens, things yeah. slow you down, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I never did dream it was going to be 10 years. I, it got to be one of them things where I was wondering if it would ever get done. But uh, with the help of my wife, and uh, we got her done. I can I can speak from that. I have a very supportive wife with my addiction, and uh, yeah, if it wasn't for her, oh, most definitely. <laughs> um, one other thing: is this your only Jeep right now? Uh, actually, this is one of three. One I, of three. It was one of four, but a fellow showed up and he wanted one Jeep worse than I did, and he drove away with it. So okay. we're we're down to three at the moment. And uh, this one's obviously orange, but what what colors are your other Jeeps? Uh, our other one jeep it's a 97 tj it's red and then we have a 12 jk and it's oh it's got a name about that long red crystal pearl something so you're a red jeep guy um most uh, red has been a very popular color in most of my vehicles but after i bought this one in orange i kind of liking the orange too all right all right so you heard it here first got an orange jeep two red jeeps Looks like Red's winning so far. All Ooh. right. That's it from us. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs> Man, that's a clean Jeep. Oh, that was CJ. cute. Wasn't that beautiful? Gracious. God, that was a beautiful Jeep. And it Did looked, you see how clean it was underneath it? There's like yeah, not a spot those axles of you mud eat off anywhere. Of. It, uh, I know. It, 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 to me, it looked red, though. You know, it just, you know, that, that bright. Of course. It's probably just the camera. Tony with the rose-colored glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Well, speaking of rose-colored glasses, let's see what's going on in Wheeling Ware. Yes, we're going to talk about what events are coming up in your neck of the woods and around the nation. Uh, of course, we've been talking about this for several weeks. Got the Ohio Jeep Fest coming up this weekend as we are recording the show, 7th, 8th, and 9th. Make sure, hey, if you guys are heading out to that, let us know what you thought of it. Give us a call, uh, 530-675-4102, or shoot us an email, info at jeeptalkshow.com. Let us know what you think or thought of the Ohio Jeep Fest. Hey, Josh. Also, I yeah. just want to mention really quick, uh, we've reached out to some people, uh, our followers on social media, and we're rounding up a few folks to take some pictures like uh, uh, Bart. Oh, good. And, like Bart. And, oh, actually, Bart said he's going to go. I just found out tonight. Bart said he's got uh, okay from the wife to go out there for three hours. Outstanding. So you guys, uh, make sure you monitor the Jeep Talk Show social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, so on and so forth, Tumblr, uh, and you may get to see, if you can't go, you may get to see a lot of Ohio Jeep Fest uh, festival pictures uh this weekend i'll be living vicariously yes. through bart or whoever we have out there yes uh well uh, this one is also we also have uh some uh some talent close to the show if you will be going to this show it's the all breeds jeep show quadratech uh, in association with pa jeeps is presenting the 22nd annual all breeds jeep show happening july 15th through the 16th that'll be the following weekend as we are recording this uh, this is happening at the york county expo uh, center and fairgrounds in york pennsylvania for more information head over to pajeeps.org now tammy will be there at this one now she's got some swag that is going to be here just in the nick of time guys she'll be handing out some stickers and koozies uh, they're at the show, so be sure to look for her. She's going to be walking around, checking out the vendors and stuff, and she's going to be handing out her Jeep Mama Enjoy Life bracelets as well. So be sure to flag her down, and uh, if you see somebody with a Jeep talk show shirt, well, chances are that's her. Uh, coming up July 22nd through the 23rd, uh, we have Four Wheel Parts presenting the Truck and Jeep Fest. This is something that happens each and every year, guys. This is a huge event happening at Long Beach, California. For more information, head over to fourwheelparts.com. And this is one that is uh, also very close to the show. We have Steve, 4.3 LXJ. That's right. You've heard him. You've heard his advice. And he's been a fan and a part of the show for years. Well, he's heading out to the Pacific Northwest and is hosting a one-time only special event happening August 19th through the 20th with a special solar eclipse viewing party on the following day on the 21st. If you guys don't know about the big solar eclipse, well, it's all over the news, so be sure to check it out. He, he will be here in the state of Oregon at the Tillamook State Forest, otherwise known as Browns Camp Wheeling Area. Uh, he's planning on wheeling in the Tillamook State Forest Saturday and Sunday, August 19th through the 20th, followed with a trip to Lincoln City to view the solar eclipse. Wheeling trails will be chosen according to who shows up. Included will be some instruction in spotting techniques for those interested. Contact Steve, 4.3LXJ, at xjtalk.com or jeeptalkforum.com. 
Also have Jeep Jamboree USA presenting the uh, well, it's, uh, the Rubicon Trail Run, August 10th through the 13th. For more Ooh. information on this one, head to JeepJamboreeUSA.com. Oh, wow. Lots of great stuff there. Love hearing yeah. all that uh, Wheeling Wear stuff. I know you get out of breath and uh, need a glass of water there, but, uh, boy, it's great hearing all that stuff. You know, I'm thinking, uh, you know, the, the, the solar eclipses don't happen that often, Steve. But there's nothing to keep you from having a night wheeling adventure next year and just call it the full moon. Because <laughs> you could yeah, always. Yeah, he's going to show up without any pants and we just can't have that. You could always have a full moon, even if it's not <laughs> in the lunar cycle. <laughs> All right, let's get the hell out of here. And now we wait for it to play. Good God. <sighs> Nate's behind this. I know he is. He's sitting there giggling in the uh, chat room. So new to the show, maybe you're watching this on YouTube and it's your first time with us. We Well, we want you to know uh, we make it really easy for you to listen to the show while you're on the go. You can install the Jeep Talk Show app on your Apple or Android device. And of course, you can always find our episodes at jeeptalkshow.com website. Hey, and we told you that it can take days for our podcast to appear on various podcasting sources like iTunes or Stitcher. You can change all that by downloading and installing the Jeep Talk Show app on your iOS phone, tablet, or your Android phone or tablet. With our new apps, you can truly have the latest Jeep Talk Show episodes on demand. And continuing our domination of all things media, we are on YouTube. Guys, it's how we bring the show to you live twice a week. You can watch our live show or watch past shows at youtube.com slash Jeep Talk Show. And oh, hey, if you guys subscribe, you'll be notified of new videos immediately. So be sure to head over to youtube.com slash Jeep Talk Show and subscribe. Hey, are you thinking, boy, the Jeep Talk Show sounds like a lot of fun? I wonder if I could be part of the show. Well, of course you can. Just send us an email at info at jeeptalkshow.com and let us know what your idea is for the show. We love our listeners. And don't forget to tune in on Tuesday nights. It's a Jeep Talk Show spinoff, the Jeep Talk Call-In Show. What is it? Well, it's a podcast that you can call into and share your stories live with Tony and I. Yes, I said live. You don't need to go to our website and hit that little red button on the right-hand side of the screen. Not only can you call in live and share your experiences with Tony and I, we are going to be bringing Jeep and off industry leaders and vendors to you live interviews on Tuesday night. So join Tony and I every Tuesday night at Pop Central. Call in youtube.com slash deep talk show. Well, that's it for this week, guys. Until next week, be sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr. Friend us on Facebook, circle us like vultures on Google Plus, and above all else, be sure to tell a friend about the Jeep Talk Show. So, no matter where you're wheeling, if you pack it in, make sure you pack it out. Let's leave our outdoor wheeling destinations in as good, if not better condition than they were when we arrived. Remember to always tread lightly, stay on designated trails, and don't wheel where you're not supposed to. If you'd like to learn more about the Tread Lightly principles and how you can help keep our trails both lands open for proper use, head over to www.treadlightly.org. Four seconds. Three. Two, one. <laughs> and we're out of here. <laughs> Not yet. Have- I'm Sorry, I've got to get some AC into the studio. It's like yeah, it's got to be over there. eighty-five degrees in here. Yeah. Um, if you could, uh, if you could put the the Honda in there as yeah. they're stealing it and as it's <laughs> rushing away, there would be a breeze. No, uh, I was. Just, no, I do. I do have a fan underneath the underneath the desk that uh, that I have blowing. But it, I mean, it's it's, it's blowing hot air. Oh, is all who, it's doing. So who is she? And does she li- watch the show regularly? Oh um, <laughs> no, 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 no! We're not going there. <laughs> Okay, folks. No, no, wrapping it no, up. No, talking about it. it's just a fa- oh, out of control. <laughs> it's like the police academy all over again. <laughs> <laughs> so the. Uh,